In this tutorial, we're going to do a quick exercise. We're going to create a definition uh, applying concepts of constructing and deconstructing data in Grasshopper. If you haven't seen previous tutorials uh, regarding this subject, I advise you to do so before following this exercise. All the links are in the description below. So let's get started. So let's make a quick overview of this exercise. We're going to have a double curved surface uh, from Rhino and we want to evaluate the height parameters of the surface and based on that height parameter paint uh, the surface in gradient color. So in a sense it's going to be an analysis of this surface. So let's uh, open our grasshopper window and begin by storing this surface geometry from Rhino environment in Grasshopper. To do that, we need to grab a container object under param geometry. I'm going to choose surface container, but other types of um, containers such as brep or geometry in general would also fit this purpose. Let's right click the parameter object and choose select one surface and click the surface in Rhino. And now we have this surface referenced in Grasshopper as well. As you may notice, uh, we have overlapping preview. I'd like to fix that. I'm going to double click on Grasshopper title bar. And then I'm going to choose to turn off the layer preview. This is my preferred way to turn off the geometry preview. Otherwise, you could also select the specific object and then in the command prompt type in hide click enter and you would hide the object and to turn it on again just type in show click enter and that would show all the hidden objects however if you're not aware about the hidden objects in your, in your rhino file uh, this might cause some confusion that's why I always recommend using layers and turning off layers. Let's double click Grasshopper title bar and expand the window again. And the next step we're going to take is going to be data conversion. We're going to convert this brep surface into a mesh geometry. Let's go under params geometry and choose mesh. Let's connect. And you can see we have overlapping preview again. Uh, the red shade is a bit too intense. And it's because we have both mesh geometry and uh, NURB surface uh, previewed on top of each other. I'm going to turn off the NURB surface preview. And I'm going to now go under display and choose preview mesh edges so that we see the structure of the mesh reminding you that in very basic terms meshes are defined by uh, their vertices and their topology the connection between these vertices but in this tutorial uh, the topology is not so relevant to us uh, we are more concerned about the vertices the points and their location so let's deconstruct this mesh under mesh analysis let's choose deconstruct mesh component let's input our mesh <coughs> into this component and now we're going to focus on vertices and i'm also going to use param object for points just to visually emphasize that uh, we are considering uh, the points here and i'm also going to use the panel so that we can see that in fact uh, it's a list of coordinates so x y and z uh, relative to the default world x y plane okay so so far we have converted NURB surface into a mesh we have deconstructed this mesh in order to extract uh, the vertices and now we want to extract a specific coordinate from each of these vertices and we want to extract z 
coordinates from all these points. So to do that, we need to deconstruct these points. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are interested in the height parameter in this exercise. So let's go under vector point and choose deconstruct point component. Let's connect our vertices to this component. I'm going to uh, reuse the panel so that we can see that we have now separated the, the sets of coordinates into separate lists of x, y, and z coordinates. So from here, we're going to focus on z coordinate of these points. And now we want to evaluate this list of z coordinates in terms of uh, the minimum and the maximum value. To do that, we're going to go under math, domain, and choose bounds component. Let's connect our z values to the input of the bounds component. I'm also going to use the the copy of this panel. So we see the output of the bounds component and we have the minimum and the maximum value of this list. So we have the, the domain. So in my case, the domain is somewhere from a 5 to 19. Okay, so we have now the minimum and the maximum Z value. And we are all set up to create a gradient painting. So let's talk about painting this mesh now. Let's go under params, input, and we're going to use the gradient tool here. So let's talk about the gradient tool. I'm going to create a tutorial focusing specifically on this tool. Uh, but here we also have to discuss some of the aspects of the gradient. So the gradient component requires as an input lower limit value, the upper limit value, so the minimum and the maximum, and then the list of values in between the minimum and the maximum. So I do have the domain of Z values constructed using the bounds component. The only issue here is that bounds outputs the domain in one stream and I need to separate them so that I could, could input L0 and L1. So let's do that. Uh, let's go under Math, Domain, and choose Deconstruct Domain Component. And with this component, we're going to separate the streams into a start of the domain or the minimum value and the end of the domain or the maximum value. So you can see that we have the start around 5 and the end around 19 in my case. So now I can connect accordingly to the gradient component. So the last input parameter required here, uh, represented with letter T, is just Z, the, the list of Z coordinates in between the established domain. So we can directly connect uh, the Z values into T input. So now the gradient component doesn't show any errors or warnings. This means that it works well. Let's see what is the output here. Let's connect the panel to the gradient output. And as you can see here, we have this color code RGB values for each of the point. And these color values depend on the colors in the gradient or the gradient that we have set. So we are very close to finish. We have the mesh and we also have the colors assigned to each of the vertices in the mesh. However, we do need to use additional component here under mesh primitive let's pick mesh color component 
So this component requires the mesh to be painted and colors assigned to its vertices. So we have the colors as RGB values um, as an output from gradient component. And we also have the mesh, the initial mesh. And you can see right now that the preview of the geometry in Rhino window has been updated. Our mesh has been painted. I'm going to clean up the preview by turning off some parts of the definition now. Turning off the preview. I'm also going to turn off the mesh here and then go under display and turn off the preview mesh edges. Our exercise is now complete, but I would like to finish by talking a bit more in depth about the last component that we have used, which is mesh colors. So this component takes the mesh vertices and assigns the color, in this case from the gradient, to each of the vertices. I'm going to turn on the points so we see the location of the vertices uh, in the mesh. And I'm also going to grab a panel so we can see the output here. So this list, the RGB values from the gradient tool, matches the order of the vertices. And it matches because I was using the same stream of data. That's why the order of the list matches inside. And then each of the vertex, vertex is assigned a color and then the area in between is being interpolated. So if I now turn on the preview of mesh edges or the, the topology, you can see why it's not so relevant in this specific scenario. So I hope you have enjoyed this exercise. In the next video, we're going to talk more in depth about the gradient component. I will see you then.